Dear students, in this video, we are going to see the experiment number 9, Association Rule Learning using a priori algorithm for the Machine Learning Techniques Lab. To start with this algorithm, first we need to know in real world, we have various problems. So all these problems are categorized into mainly three categories. That is regression, classification, clustering and association. And under this regression and classification will come under the category of supervised learning. So as you know, supervised learning here the machine will learn by using the data and the labeled information. So while you try to predict the numerical value, the problem will lead to regression. If you try to predict the categorical value, so it will lead to the classification problem. And now the association will come under a topic of unsupervised learning. So you know what is an unsupervised learning. So during the unsupervised learning, the model itself try to discover some patterns and derive some insights through the unlabeled data and the unsupervised learning it can be categorized into clustering and association so clustering represents grouping of objects based on some similar property and association is mainly used to find the dependency of one data to the another data so these association rules are mainly used in the marketing strategy the one of the best example for the association mining is the market basket analysis. So in association, we are trying to find the association between an item X to item Y. So we are trying to discover the association rules or the association between two items. Suppose a customer buy an item X that is example bread. So what is the uh, probability that he will purchase the item Y with a combination of bread with butter or bread with jam. So based on this association rule, you can get some confidence information that 93% of the people who purchased item A can purchase item B. So we can form uh, or we can develop the association rules with some confidence level so that it will increase in the market analysis the prediction or you can find out the association of one item with the another item so now how does this association rule learning will work so basically the association rule works with the concept of if else statement that is i have x and y so this x is called as the antecedent and then the y is called the consequent. So it means that if I purchase bread, what is the next thing? What is the next thing associated with the bread? Whether it can be a jam or it can be a butter. So that it represents with the if this item is purchased. What is the association of the item with the next item, either a jam or a butter? So to measure the association between a thousands of items in the transaction, there are several metrics are available. So these are the some of the metrics which is used in the association rule learning. One is called as support, another one is called as confidence and another one is called as lift. And suppose we have an example. So we have an item X is computer and we have an item Y is the antivirus software. So what is the association between the item computer to the item antivirus software? So when I have a support value is 2 percentage, what it means that 2 percentage. So in the transaction, it is seeing that 2 percentage of customers whoever bought the computer, they bought the antivirus software along with that. And what is this confident value represent? The confidence value give the meaning that 60% of customers who purchase computer also bought the software, the antivirus. So that we can get the information or that you can use these two informations to identify our rules. That is the association between the X with the Y. And next is what is mean by the value lift. 
So the lift will give the relationship between the item X to the item Y. So if the lift value is 1, it means that there is no correlation between the item Z. And if the lift value is greater than 1, there is a positive correlation. So there is a likely thing that if I purchase an item X, that is likely to bought the item Y. And if the lift value is less than 1, it means that it is a negative correlation. That is, if I purchase an item X, that is unlikely you can bought the item, put the things together X and Y. And to work with association rule learning, there are three types of algorithms available. First one is a priori, next is ECLAT and the FP growth algorithm. In this video, we are going to see with the a priori algorithm by using a set of input data. So how you can apply this algorithm to develop the association rules with the use of the support and the confidence. So to start with the algorithm, the algorithm generally uses a frequent database. So already available, the transaction data set is used to generate the association rules. So with the available data set, we need to identify some associations and correlation between the data items. And using that, we are going to develop some association rule that specify if I, how likely there are two items can be bought together. And to start with the algorithm, the first step, we need to decide what is our minimum support and the confidence. And next, Using the available data set, we need to have the item set with the size of 1. And for the item set, you need to calculate the support value. What is the, uh, or what is the frequency of purchasing a particular item in the transaction individual wise, item wise, first you have to calculate. Then we need to apply this support threshold and we need to prune that item set. And now we need to create a sequence of item together that is a combination of two items that is the item set of two and also we need to identify how many times the particular pair of item is purchased so like that you need to repeat for a sequence of three items purchased a sequence of four item purchased what is the association between that four items so like that we need to repeat the process until we don't have any additional item to satisfy our minimum threshold value. So once we define the final item set, now we need to define the association rule with the help of the confidence threshold. And after finalizing the association rule, we need to sort the rules based on the lift value in the decreasing order. So this is the thing we are going to see with the sample data set. So now I will go with one sample data set and I will explain you how the step by step procedure is followed to create an association rule for a given item set. So this is the given item set which containing a value A, B, C. So the second transaction. So these are the transaction ID that is the first customer purchase an item with the combination of item A, B, C. The second person a combination of A, B. So the six transaction we are having totally. And we have the unique items A, B, C, D, E. So these are the unique items. So either some customer having a combination of these items. So we need to identify the association rule between these items. The minimum support threshold selected is 33.34 and the confident threshold is 60. So whatever coming above that, so minimum support threshold means whatever value coming below that we are not going to consider. And also for confidence threshold, whatever value coming below 60 percentage, we are not going to consider the association between that particular item. And now this is the first step. First step, we have our data set and we need to fix the support threshold and the confidence threshold and to use with the support value so i need to convert as a support count so we have this threshold value is in terms of percentage the count value i doesn't know it so n is the total transaction is six so i am getting some value 200.04 divided by 100 so the support threshold or the support count 
I am going to consider as 2. Okay. And now the second step you need to identify the item set with the size of 1. So I am going to keep the item sets the unique value A, B, C, D, E. So how many times A is purchased in the transaction? So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I am writing my support count is 4. And how many times B is purchased in the transaction? 1, 2. And how many times C got purchased? So again it is 1 and 2. So 2 times. How many times D got purchased? 1, 2, 3. And E you have 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is my initial candidate set with a single item purchased among the transaction. And now I need to apply my support threshold. The support threshold we have created is 2. So we need to prune our item set which is having the support count is less than 2. And now we have all the thing is equal to 2 and about 2. So we are not going to prune any of this data. We are going to keep this data set as a frequent item data set. So this is we completed with the first iteration. At the end of the first iteration, based on the single item, how many times it is purchased in the transaction. So that value we have derived. And using this value, now we are going to create a candidate set 2, that is the item size is 2. So we need to create a combination of an item, that is A and B purchased together. So out of this, I can have AB, then AC, AD, AE. This is one combination. The next combination I have BC, BD and then BE. Next combination you have CD and CE. The last combination you have D and E. So from this unique item set size 1, now we have created the item set size of 2. That is our candidate set. So now we need to calculate the support count. So from the transaction, how many transaction having a purchase having purchase of the both items A and B. So here you can see A and B together 1, 2. So totally we have 2. And now come with AC. This is 1 and we have only 1. Then AD we can go through 1 and 2. And AE we have 1, 2. So 2 times in the transaction we have got it. And next is BC. So BC we have only one time. Then we have a combination of BD. So there is no combination of BD. Also there is no combination of BE. And no combination of CD. Then we have a combination of CE. Yes, so CE is there. One. And then DE. One, two, three combination. So we have derived the support count with the item together purchased A and B. So now we apply the support threshold which is less than 2. So we are trying to prune all the item set which is having the support count is less than 2. So now I will reject this and I am going to reject this. I am going to reject this combination, this combination, this combination. So from the candidate set, I have pruned the item set, whoever having the support threshold is less than 2. So now my frequent item set having only the combination of AB with the support count is 2, AD with the support count is 2, AE 2 and we have, this also we are not having, okay. So DE we are having 3. So this is the end of our second iteration. And now we are trying to create a combination of three items together because the maximum items together we have three. So I can repeat until three. Okay. So now I need to create a combination of two items that can create a combination of three items. So I need to create an item set with the size of three. Okay. So already know I have AB, AD, AE and DE. 
So using that, I can create a combination by combining AB and AD. I have a combination ABD. Then AB and AE, I have a combination ABE. And AB and DE, so I don't have a four combination, so I'm not going to consider that. Then AD and EAE, AD and AE, so I don't have it, so I will keep it AD and AE. Then AD and DE, that also leads to ADE. Then AE and DE, that also leads to ADE. So I have four, three combinations, ABD, ABE, ADE. So now I need to identify in my given transaction, is there any transaction having a purchasing of three items which having a given combination ABD. So I don't have any combination with ABD. Next, I don't have any combination with ABE, but I have two combinations with ADE. So I have with ADE. Now the next step, I need to prune it based on the condition, my support threshold is my support threshold is less than 2. So now this I will reject the item set. This I will reject it. So I am getting the final frequent item with the item sizes 3. So I have the combination of ADE. So this is up to the step. We have the thing for deriving our frequent item set with the maximum size of 3. Because in our transaction the maximum size we have 3. So this is my third iteration and I will stop it here because I am not able to further create a combination of the items because the maximum length of my item purchased is 3. So now using this I am going to create a confidence rule. So I have my frequent item set with the size of 1, with the size of 2 and with the size of 3. Okay. And now we need to create a support. Okay. So now actually the final thing we are having the A, D, E. Okay. So from this final set I need to create a confidence rule. So I need to create a rule X to Y. And I am taking it from this I am trying to create a combination. So it may create A, D with the combination of E. Or I can create a combination of A, E with D, then I can create a combination of D E with A. So parallelly I can have E with A D and D with A E and A with D E. So these are the various association rules I am having. These are the not the final association rule and this is from the final frequency set I have created possible association rules. And for all these rules, you need to create a or get a confidence value. And whichever confidence value is less than 60, I am going to reject. And I am going to keep the association rule, whoever having the confidence value is greater than 60. So how will you get the confidence? And to work with, first I will calculate the support. Okay. So to calculate the support, so I need to calculate support of x to y. So here my x can be a d to e. Okay. That represents frequency of x comma y. That is nothing but frequency of a d e. I know that divide by 9, n. Okay. So frequency of a d e. I know frequency of a d is 2 times in my data set. So 2 by out of 6 transaction. I have 2 by 6. So if you do this thing all, all will have the support value is 2 by 6 only okay now i need to calculate the confidence so i need to calculate the confidence between ad transaction to e so i need to calculate frequency of ade because it represents frequency of ade divided by frequency of only x x represents ad what it means Frequency of ADE, I know 2. Frequency of AD, how many times AD combination I get? 2 times. So my confidence value is 1. Okay. Or I can represent in terms of percentage. So it can be a 100 percentage. Okay. And next I need to calculate AE to D. So frequency of AE. So frequency of AE, I can get 2. 
and then A E D the answer is 2 so I will again get the answer is 1 then I will go with the next thing frequency of A D E is 2 and frequency of D E so you go with frequency of D E is 3 so it is around 2 by 3 okay and now I have the next thing again the upper frequency always it is 2 so 2 by frequency of E so frequency of E I am getting here that is 4 that is I am getting with 0.5 and then frequency of ADE divided by frequency of D frequency of D is 3 so 2 by 3 so this I am getting around the value 0.66 okay then frequency of this thing I am considering frequency of A that is 0.5 okay so out of this I am trying to put whoever having less than 60 I am going to reject okay so I am going to reject this and I am going to reject this the final rule I am getting only A D leads to E that association rule combination with the confidence of 1 then the next rule a E with D that is also having a confidence value of 1 and then the next rule is D E with A that is having the confidence value of 0.66 and the last one I am getting D with A E that is also with the confidence value of 0.66 okay so these are the confidence I have final derived association rule which having the confidence value above 1. So for this I am going to calculate the lift value. So the lift value already I know for every value the support is 2 by 6 divided by support of x AD. Okay, So AD frequency we are having 2. So again that is also 2 by 6 because support frequency divided by n into support value of E. So E is we having 4 so the answer is 4 by 6 so this this we are getting 6 by 4 so we are getting around 1.5 so automatically you know that the lift value is the lift value is greater than 1 greater than 1 means there is a correlation between the item ad to e okay so the lift value is greater than 1 means there is a positive correlation between these two sequence of products and like that here also we can calculate so the support value is 2 by 6 divided by the combination of a e combination of a is again 2 by 6 divided by d it is 3 by 6 so we are getting the answer is 6 by 3 that is 2 which is also greater than 1 and here we are having 2 by 6 divided by d e so d e combination is 3 by 6 and then A combination we are having 4 by 6. 4 by 6. So we are connecting with this. This we have cut it. And 2 by 3 into 6 by 4. That is around 2 and 2. That is also you have getting 1. So lift value is greater or equal to 1. So if it is equal to 1, already you know that if it is equal to 1, so there is no correlation between that data. So next we need to find the lift value between D to AE. So we have the support value is again 2 by 6 and for D we having 3 by 6 and for AE we having 2 by 6. So 2 by 6, 2 by 6 we having 6 by 3. So that value is 2. So again the lift value is greater than 1. So when we consider with the confidence value, we are getting the final rule, association rules. This one, this one, this one, this one. And then we are calculating the lift value. So under the lift value, this is greater than 1, this is greater than 1 and this is also greater than 1. But here it is having equal to 1. Now we need to do a line by line hands on coding for this implementation. So to work with first we need to read the data. So either you can use with excel or csv you read the data in the data frame. 
So once the data is read in the data frame, we need to convert that data into a list. So we are using the string.split function to making your data instead of sequence, it will be converted as a list. So now we need to create the item set that is our and before that we need to assign what is our support threshold that is 2 and our confidence threshold so that value we are going to keep it as 60. So now we are going to create the item set of size 1 okay. So whatever items you are getting in our data frame we are calling a function called as count item. What this function is going to do? This function is going to create a dictionary. So every unique elements of your data set A, B, C, D, E that will be going to act as a key in the dictionary and the corresponding value. So I am going to identify the occurrence of A that is my key in the corresponding list. So I take every row at a time and I am going to count. So every row I am going to take and from that I am going to take this value A and I am making it as a key and then I am trying to add plus 1 and B. So going to the key B adding 1, C going to the key adding. Now it is again A, it is 1 plus 1 so it becomes 2. So like that I am going to create a dictionary with the item as a key and the count value as a value that is the count and now this is my dictionary so I want to work with data frame so you need to convert the next step you need to convert dictionary to data frame okay so dictionary to data frame you convert so all your keys will become as item set in your data frame all the value that is your support count will come now this data frame I am going to pass it to the function called as prune that I am going to pass my support threshold is 2. So the data frame I having a function greater than or equal to 2. So wherever in the support count greater than or equal to 2 that rows get pruned from my data frame. So finally I will get the answer. So this is called my frequent set. And now what is the next step I need to do? I need to find the combination of item set with size of 2. So I need to combine A to B. Next I need to combine A to C, A to D, A to E. So like that I need to create item size of 2 combination. So I need to take only the item sets from the data frame. So df dot item sets. So this will return back me only the item sets. So that item sets I am using to create tuples with the combination of size 2 okay so for that I am using a function called as join okay join function so this join function the list of item represents nothing but my data frames item sets the count represent I need to create a combination of 2 2 with the size so this I pass it here okay so first time I having Every input value A I need to combine with B. So 2, 2 only. So this will perform the combination with size 2. So I am creating a tuple with checking the first element, second element. So I am trying to create a combinations. And this else part will work with the size of greater than 2. Combination of 3, combination of 4 you want to form means this will come here. So now my combination is only combination of 2. So I am trying to join every element with the other elements. I am creating a tuple of all the combinations from my item set of size 1. So once it is done, the next step, again you know that you need to calculate the support count. Okay. So now it is with the two combination. So I am going to use with the next function called as count item set. Here also the same concept. So we are having a dictionary. So this item sets are going to act as a keys and then I need to search this in my original transaction data frame. Okay, I need to identify how many combinations have a sequence of A, B and then that I am going to add it in my key and I am trying to count it.
So out of this count item set function, I will get a dictionary. Once I get a dictionary, I cannot work directly with the dictionary. So I need to convert the dictionary into a data frame. So the conversion you have to do, convert the dictionary into a data frame. So now I get a data frame. Again, you need to call the function called as prune. So when I prune the values less than the less than the threshold, so I will get only the values whoever greater than 2, that alone I will get it. Okay, so the support count less than or equal to 2, you prune it so that you can have the values whichever is greater than 2 only and have it in my frequent set. So once it is done, the next thing is I am having a three combination. So we need to repeat this. So here you see here, next I need to create, I need to pass this item set that is df dot item sets. So this I need to pass to again my join function. Okay. So call the join function, create the item set of size 3, then you will get that information like this tuple and that tuple you pass it to the count item set. So the third iteration, it will create a list of combination with A, B, C or 3 item size and then you call the prune function. So you will, up to that we will stop because we don't have a combination of 4. So combination of 3, we will stop it. So final data frame I will get in the item 3 with the support count of 2. So now I have all my combination with single item combination, 2 item combination, 3 item combination. And this is the final item. I have stopped it here. Now I need to calculate the confidence value. So this code will help you to calculate the confidence. Okay, to calculate the confidence out of the thing. So this is the thing we are getting with the confidence value. And then again you know that your confidence thing is you need to use or you need to reject the association rules whichever having the confidence value of less than 60. So this is my final association rule which having the confidence value is greater than 60. So this will help you to create the association rule, association rule and the corresponding confidence value, you can use this function to create it because now I have A, D, E. I will take the first combination A, D. Okay. So I have total combination A, D, E. I will do the difference. So when I do the difference, I will get E. So my first rule is A, D combination E. So this I reverse, I will get E combination with A, D. Okay, so like that I will use this function to get the all sequence AD with E, E with AD, then D with AE, AE with D, A with DE and DE with A, all the combination. And here I am going to calculate the confidence value. Okay, so this is one thing for calculating the confidence of this thing. And we have another one here that is a, so this will calculate the confidence of A, D to E. And this will calculate the confidence value of E to A, D. Okay, after calculating, after displaying these association rules in the confidence, I have the association rules and also the corresponding confidence value. Because the confidence I am creating like a data frame. I have two fields, item set and the confidence. Item set I am going to keep all my association rules. In the confidence, I am keeping the corresponding confidence value. Then I can use my prune function and prune all the confidence rules which are having less than 60. So this will be rejected and this will be rejected. So I am getting only rule 1, rule 2, rule 3 and rule 4. So these are my final association rules. So I think you have understand how the association rule learning is work to identify the association between the item set using the a priori algorithm. Thank you.